Hello everyone, we have discussed in last classes the different aspects of neurophysiological comfort related parameters. We have discussed that there are different types of receptors present in the human skin and these receptors get sensations from environment and clothing and ultimately it sends signal to our brain. In the first segment we have discussed the mechanical receptors. So, different types of mechanical receptors we have discussed. We have discussed the tactile uh, receptors, receptors for pain sensation. Then we have uh, discussed various sensations related to uh, clothing like uh, prickle sensation, itching sensation, uh, skin rashes. Okay. This all we have discussed related to mechanical reception. Now, we will start the next type of reception which is thermal reception. There are different types of thermal receptors we have discussed, we have mentioned earlier. Now, we will discuss in detail. So, if you see the receptors are of uh, basically four different types of thermal receptors are there. One is cold receptors that is uh, that sense the cold sensing it has got. Then heat receptors it sense anything warm and within this two receptors thermal receptors there are two more receptors which uh, deal with the pain like pain due to cold extreme cold and pain due to extreme heat. So, this all receptors we will uh, discuss here and uh, related activities when we we are clothing and we should have clear understanding about this type of receptors how do they work to understand the thermal comfort behavior. So, these are the receptors we have discussed. Basically thermal receptors suppose a uh, pain receptors, this is a say hot uh, spot is there hot object some flame. So, if it sense the our skin our pain receptor if it sense that there is a an hot object. So, it immediately sends signal the transmission of signal that we have discussed in last class. So, it sends signal to through the spinal cord and to our brain and our brain reacts okay. it evaluates okay. then it reacts and ultimately it sends back the signal again to our muscle and muscle contract and our hands we can move out of the flame. So, this way it uh, in the closed loop it work. So, if we see the thermal receptor the noci receptor of uh, hot pain receptor it, it is receiving a signal and it sends back the signal to the brain and this way it works. Now, sensations related to thermal stimuli is that the skin has uh, it acts as a barrier between our environment and the body. Okay. It is um, uh, our uh, internal organism okay. and the, the idea of this barrier is to maintain the core temperature within a very short range that is 36 degree Celsius to 38 degree Celsius. Okay. That our body 
tries to keep maintain this temperature by physiological activities. The skin is the most important organ of human body through which heat and moisture flows out from the body to the environment when it is required and from the surrounding it receives if it is needed. Okay. So, that the through skin the heat and moisture flows to keep the heat balance of our body. So, in when our body gets warm, okay, it sends it uh, transmits heat uh, from inside to outside through through uh, skin. Okay. So, to maintain the heat balance the skin in addition to this making heat balance it also has got thermal sensor which actually uh, regulates the human physiological activities. The skin this uh, thermal receptors take part in the thermoregulatory control and this affect the person's thermal sensation okay, and related to comfort. The complex vascular system and sweat gland actually in the, in the skin helps in maintaining the conductance of skin in response to the thermoregulatory demand. What does it mean? So, it actually the human skin actually it, when we feel uh, warm. So, to release the heat it starts physiological activities start. So, by uh, to release the excess heat it releases the sweat. So, and our conductance of the skin also changes. So, the human skin contains basically four different types of sensors that is thermoreceptors and uh, these are basically nothing but uh, nerve endings. So, these nerve endings are one is cold nerve ending, warmth, then hot pain and cold pain and each of these uh, receptors they have their own range of activity means within that particular range they are active beyond that range they are not active some other receptor thermoreceptor will act. Now, let us see and also their presence in the body is not uniform in our human body it is not uniform. So, it has been observed that in some places the suppose on um, with a small object okay, when it is touched with the with uh, the skin or skin it may get some places we may feel warm or some may some places we are we do not feel which what does it mean that is the distribution within the skin uh, of this uh, thermo receptors uh, cold receptors or warm receptors are different and it is not present throughout the body uniformly. So, a small hot object suppose if we touch at different parts of our body in some part we may feel warm and some part we may may not feel that. Okay. That means, the point where warm receptors are present there it sends it actually it uh, sends that uh, signal, okay. but the places where warm receptors are not there that it, it does not um, sense. Similarly, in case of cold receptors. Okay. So, within small warm and cold stimulator, okay. so that touched with small warm and cold stimulator suppose with the help of warm pin if we touch. So, this, this is actually proved. So, that means, so it, it uh, its uh, distribution at different places are different. Let us see with this picture. So, if we see that uh, the distribution is uh, the cold receptors number of receptors uh, cold receptors are much more than the warm receptor. If we see 
like and maximum concentration of cold receptor is at chest, where typically it is around 10 number 10 receptors per square centimeter and least at the say finger, where, where it is may be less than uh, around uh, less than 2. So, this receptors uh, per uh, centimeter. So, that uh, that is a type of so less than uh, say 4 receptors, so 3 receptors around around 3 receptors there. That what does it mean? That means, at the chest the concentration of the receptors are uh, very high, where that means, it is a it is a highly sensible to the sensitive to our um, cold to cold and that is why the we feel uh, we feel uh, too cold uh, we feel cold sensation at the chest region uh, very fast. Okay. And uh, this uh, outer part of the finger also it is very high it is high it is around 8. So, this type of data gives the total clear idea about that where do we want to keep our uh, body warm. Like one simple example we can see suppose one we when we feel uh, 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 very cold suppose we are not clothed. So, we are feel very cold. So, if we wrap one uh, a piece of cloth around our chest we suddenly feel start feeling warm. Similarly, if we wear gloves, so that uh, outer side of the finger is with a very high number of cold receptors gives the warmth okay. it is um, uh, that it uh, sends cold and that is why uh, it is uh, it gives uh, when we uh, wear uh, gloves it gives the warmth. Okay. Similarly, if we see the on the other hand that uh, warmth receptor number of warmth receptor is uh, very less very low. So, it is um, less than 2 if you see if you we see that uh, most of the places it is uh, less than 2 per square centimeter. Okay. So, this distribution if you see so it says that if we uh, touch at a particular place there uh, it may not be it may not uh, be available the sensor may not be available. So, it will not sense okay. and uh, so uh, these are the places two different zone you can see here where the maximum and minimum receptors are present concentration of receptors. So, now if we see the discharge frequency of these receptors cold and warmth receptors if you see even cold pain and hot pain receptor at different temperature. So, this picture this uh, schematic diagram it shows that the cold receptors it starts sensing around say from 7 degree Celsius. At 7 degree Celsius, it uh, starts sensing and maximum frequency of reception that is discharge frequency is maximum is around say 25 degree Celsius. And with the increase further increase in uh, temperature, it is actually reception discharge frequency reduces. This means that the cold receptor a particular cold receptors it starts sensing whether it is a cold okay, only cold it starts sensing from say 7 degree Celsius or 7 8 degree Celsius and it stops its sensation its activity around say 45 degree Celsius. So, that way so this is the zone of activity similarly no, normal warmth receptor it starts its uh, activity around say 35 degree say 30 degree Celsius and maximum activity is around say 40 45 degree Celsius. So, at 45 degree Celsius it is a maximum discharge frequency and as the temperature goes on increasing it it is a discharge frequency its sensation it drops and it stops sensing any further increase in uh, temperature beyond around say 50 degree Celsius. So, it is activity range is from say 30 to 55 degree Celsius. So, 30 to 50 are uh, between say 30 to say 45 degree Celsius in this zone there is a overlap. So, both the warmth receptors and cold receptors they are active. Okay. But maximum activity of warmth, uh, warmth receptor is at 45 degree Celsius and for cold receptors it is around say 25 degree Celsius this uh, we have discussed. And suppose 
Now, what happened beyond this? So, beyond this we do not feel either warmth or cold like say if we start our uh, if we the temperature start dropping beyond say 10 degree 15 degree Celsius. So, around say from 15 degree Celsius our cold pain receptors start its activity. So, and as we keep on reducing the temperature okay, from 15 and below. So, gradually its activity discharge frequency increases. So, what does it mean? So, at 15 degree Celsius it starts sensing we start sensing a uh, little bit pain okay, like uh, and then around say 5 7 degree Celsius 7 degree Celsius we do not feel cold. So, say at 0 degree Celsius and cold receptors they stop uh, its sensation. So, cold receptor does not work at below say 7 degree Celsius. So, it stops working and then the activity is for only for cold pain receptor that this means we can get daily, daily uh, example daily uh, we sense this type of sensation like when the at the temperature we, we keep temperature keeps on reducing we start feeling cold. Okay. Sim gradually we start feeling say 40 degree Celsius it we start uh, 40 to say 35 we start feeling little bit cold because this uh, activity this activity of the cold receptor increases the discharge frequency increases and gradually this activity is maximum. But when it is uh, at 5 degree Celsius it's, when it stopped it, it has been taken over by the cold pain receptors and at 0 degree even sub 0 degree Celsius its activity one. So, in that particular temperature although it is a cold receptors cold pain receptor we do not feel normal cold we feel cold pain cold we know it is a cold, but it is a cold pain receptors the that means normal cold that normal cold receptor is different and cold pain receptor suppose uh, one uh, example is that suppose on ice block I am pressing against my skin what will happen ice temperature is say 0 degree Celsius in 0 degree Celsius we feel cold, but it is mixed with the pain that means it is normal cold receptors it stopped working then cold pain receptor has started its work. Similarly, in warmth receptor it is uh, it stopped working at 50 degree Celsius and beyond that the hot pain receptors that very common example suppose a uh, boiling water we put our hand we will not feel basically warm we will feel warm with actually pain that means our pain receptors will start its work. So, there are four different types of thermal receptors we have discussed and now so all as we have explained here. So, all these uh, nerve endings this thermal receptors sense the temperature of the skin and transmits the information like our uh, mechanical receptors we have discussed to our brain. Okay. And this cold and warmth receptors actually it is uh, in the human skin are responsible for sensing normal environmental temperature. So, it is a it is not it is not harmful to our uh, body. So, this is uh, this normal cold and warm receptors, but the harmful temperature which is actually can damage our body these are sensed by cold pain receptor and hot pain receptor and after sensing they accordingly our body physiology work and our uh, brain sends signal and they accordingly our muscle and all this uh, closed loop system start working. So, our in uh, normally in clothing comfort we are concerned about the normal cold and uh, normal warmth receptor. Okay. We are not con concerned about the cold pain and hot pain receptor although the cold pain in uh, extreme hot extreme temperature the environmental temperature is we uh, it uh, it is uh, beyond this uh, normal temperature, but our clothing has to bring down this uh, extreme hot or extreme cold 
to the normal cold and normal warm within the our uh, microclimate zone. If we cannot, then we will not feel comfortable. Okay. So, and uh, this part we have discussed in detail. Now, it can be observed that the warm receptor that we have discussed now, the it uh, starts sensing the temperature at around 30 degree Celsius and it ends at uh, 50 degree Celsius with the maximum impulse frequency is 45 degree at 45 degree Celsius. Okay. And similarly, the cold receptors if we see the and hot pen receptors it starts its activity beyond 50 degree Celsius okay. at the time of at that time the warm receptor stops its sensation. Similarly, the cold receptor if you see the cold receptor starts its activity from 7 degree Celsius to 40 typically around 42 degree Celsius and maximum activity as 25 de, at 25 degree Celsius. Now, the cold pain receptors it starts its activity below uh, 10 degree Celsius around 15 degree below 10 degree is activity it starts and at that at that time the cold receptors are inactive. So, at lower temperature cold receptors are inactive. Now, if you see the um, location and number of sensors. So, the uh, distribution and uh, of warmth and uh, cold receptors are it is a concentration of this type of receptors as we have discussed are different at different uh, zone of our body. We have mentioned that at the chest the number of cold receptors are more. Okay. So, and warm receptors are much less then the concentration of warm receptors are much less than the cold receptors. So, that is why that we have seen that and also the location, location of cold receptors around say 0 0.15 to 0 0.17 millimeter from the skin at that depth. So, if you see this is the cold receptor, it is it is close to the skin. This depth, this depth is say around say 0.15 millimeter okay. and if we see the warmth receptor its depth is more than this uh, cold receptor. Cold receptor is present at 0.15 to 0.17 millimeter whereas, the, the warmth receptor is actually present in the dermis and which is around say 0.3 to 0.6 millimeter average depth of the warmth receptor. So, what does it mean? So, number of cold receptors are much higher than the number of warmth receptors and cold receptors are present at shallow depth and the depth of the warmth receptor is more than the cold receptor. So, this means that humans are more sensitive towards danger of the from the cold than the hot heat. So, due, which is due to presence of higher number and shallower depth of cold receptor. So, we should be very careful about the cold receptor because that uh, we sense more we are more sensitive towards cold. Okay. Now, so this all this responses this picture this schematic diagram we have shown the cold receptors and uh, warm receptor. Now, we will not discuss the pain receptor. Now, normal cold and pain receptor these are actually the activity at constant temperature. Suppose our temperature here the we are not talking about the uh, variation in temperature. That means, if the room temperature is say or skin temperature is say 15 degree Celsius our cold receptor will act at this frequency at certain frequency. If it is 25 degree Celsius it, it will act as uh, maximum frequency like that even so at 45 degree Celsius cold receptor will not work our warm receptor will work at its maximum frequency. So, these are the this is the curve which is which shows the uh, input frequency and so that is impulse frequency at uh, at constant temperature. Okay. Now, what happened when when the impulse that uh, temperature changes abruptly. Now, let us see 
Uh, this curve shows the schematically the what happened to the warmth receptor. This curve uh, is a, it's a B, which shows the warmth receptor's activity, and this C is the activity of cold receptor. And curve uh, this graph A shows the temperature profile. S uh, suppose so this is the, the time against time, and here is the it's a frequency of impulse frequency. If now the temperature profile is that for certain time the temperature is constant. Okay. Now, suppose a person it is a he is at a at constant temperature suddenly he is he entered in a room of higher temperature. So, it shows the sudden change change in temperature earlier we have discussed up to the constant temperature. So, here it uh, temperature has changed to certain temperature at a hot room he has uh, entered and now at that temperature he is there for certain time okay. and after that he has he comes out from that room and entered in a little bit cooler room. So, so this is the and remains there for some time. So, this is the our temperature activity temperature uh, suddenly increasing temperature remaining there for in a, for some time with higher temperature and then he is coming out from that zone and in cold room he is staying. Now, what to, what are the activities of our uh, cold receptor normal cold receptor will it active like uh, st uh, normal um, uh, constant temperature it will active totally differently like in the uh, the warm receptors it shows that with the increase with the time it is it gives a constant signal okay, that we have discussed we, it it, uh, it gives a particular impulse frequency. So, uh, like we can go back to that a say for, for a particular say 25 degree Celsius it is giving a particular constant frequency this frequency it will give it will not change okay. this is for constant temperature. Now, here this is giving at a particular temperature it is giving. Okay. Now, so this type this is a frequency. Now, if we suddenly change the increase the temperature increase the temperature of that uh, he is going entering to another room. So, suddenly the one receptor will st start sending the C impulse frequency at a very high rate. So, impulse frequency will increase suddenly sudden jump will be there due to increase in temperature and it will as he is the person is there for some time at high temperature, but then gradually the impulse frequency will drop gradually. So, sudden change in temperature will have shocking effect. So, it will the sensor will suddenly increase the sensation and then gradually the sensation will will be dropped and when the temperature is dropped what will happen the warmth receptor will stop its sensation. There would not be any sensation on suddenly dropping the temperature dropping the temperature suddenly it is becoming cool it is not gradual sudden change in. So, it is it uh, it is uh, impulse frequency become 0 and at that temperature if the person remains for some time after certain time. So, it will again start sending some signal for constant whatever it was there for constant certain constant temperature or something. So, it will give that amount of signal. So, this is giving that signal it is because there is certain temperature. So, it is giving certain certain because this temperature is the whatever this temperature it is within the within this warmth zone. It is within the from 30 to 50 zone this temperature is between say 30 to 50 zone. So, that is why it is giving this uh, uh, for one receptor. Now, if we see the increase in temperature, so here in the this is the uh, curve C shows the cold activity of cold receptors. So, at certain temperature it is getting this value may not be same for warm or cold receptor. So, that means, this uh, receptor this temperature is within the cold uh, reception zone that means, say 30 to so, 7 to say 42 degree Celsius for this for cold receptor this temperature is 
within this zone. Okay. And as the temperature suddenly increases, what will happen? It will act just opposite. The cold receptor will suddenly stop its activity, suddenly it will drop. But after certain time, like one receptor, it will again start sending signal, it will get. But when the temperature drops suddenly, its activity will increase suddenly, like one receptor. So, one receptor uh, it activate. Uh, this cold and warm receptor it activates abruptly with the change in sudden change in temperature. So, its activity is maximum here, then again it gradually lowers actually it is it is drops ok its activity and become stabilized. So, this is the activity when we actually move from a warm place to cold place or cold place to warm place. So, the, this sudden shock is due to this uh, this activities okay, of sensor. So, in case of abrupt increase in temperature the warm receptors are strongly stimulated at the at first and sending impulse signal at high frequency, but it gradually with the it uh, fades rapidly during the first minute followed by by increase in temperature. So, as it, um, it gradually it fades out. So, after increasing uh, and then gradually uh, the activity fades down. Then progressively more and more slowly until it reaches steady state that we have discussed. Similarly, in case of cold receptors the impulse frequency increases abruptly when sudden drop in temperature and similarly it again this stimulation fades rapidly during first minute and uh, following the drop of the temperature. So, uh, after just dropping the temperature during first minute it immediately it shoots up then gradually it is drop. These thermoreceptors respond to a steady temperature state at this lower rate, but at higher rate in the dynamic day. So, this uh, at lower rate it sends. So, this picture this graph shows at steady temperature this is the activity this is the sensation, but at uh, changing temperature its activity is very high, its impulse frequency is very high. Now, one very common example uh, it is a lower rate, okay, but at higher rate and the dynamic condition of change dynamic condition means dynamic changing condition of the so, very common example is that a strong sensation of cool or warm is felt upon entering a cold pool or hot tub. Suddenly, we jump into a cold pool or we are entering into cold pool with a cold water, initially we will be shocked our, because our sensation impulse sensation is very high, but after remaining for certain time there that type of sensation would not be there, it gradually um, drops. It's, so, this is uh, true for hot tub also. So, that is why our clothing uh, has to take part to actually avoid the shock, cold shock okay, or hot. Suppose, from uh, cold room or someone is entering from normal room to cold room. Okay, he has to wear a clothing so that to avoid this type of shock. Okay. An opposite is true. Suppose someone is entering from normal uh, temperature to the very extreme hot temperature. So this type of shock we may uh, encounter. Okay. So the temperature of the skin plays an important role for any thermal sensation, and the a person feels comfortable within a narrow temperature of skin. So, our uh, temperature zone is uh, very narrow. Now, we can see this is the temperature zone comfort temperature zone at different body parts at, uh, and at different body parts this range is little bit different. So, within this narrow zone we so, suppose in hand we feel the zone uh, the comfort zone is between this and this that is between you can say it is a 35 to 30 degrees within that zone. 
Similarly, in uh, front neck it is very close okay, say around say 35. So, we can see the temperature zone is between 30 to 40. So, that 30 to 35 is a comfortable zone. So, at different uh, parts of the body. So, lower temperature is uh, at a solid, solid line and higher temperature is shown by the dotted line. So, within that zone at and different uh, body part gets a different comfortable range. Now, what about the humidity stimuli? We have seen the mechanical stimuli which sense the mechanical sensation like touch pressure. We have seen the thermal stimuli therm thermal uh, sensors which actually sense the different types of uh, sensation related to whether it is hot, whether it is cold, whether it is constant temperature, whether it is um, uh, changing temperature. But we have to see the whether there is any humidity stimulation sensor. So, there are different types of receptors in the human body which sense different types of physical stimuli like uh, including touch, pressure, thermal, cold, pain, but there is no receptor present which sense the presence of moisture or dampness sensation. So, but we may think that okay, we, we can sense the presence of our moisture or presence of sweat or presence of dampness, but these are not due to the presence of humidity stimuli or um, uh, moisture stimuli, moisture stimulation um, uh, is not there. These are actually this we get with the help of either mechanical stimuli, mechanical uh, receptor or with the help of thermal receptors, but there is no such moisture receptors present. Like suppose we are we have started sweating sweat we have started sweating but we may not sense the sweat we may sense warmth or cool okay but suppose our forehead sometime we feel our at the forehead or some places it's a sweat we d we may not feel but when the sweat starts uh, dripping due to uh, its uh, amount which it starts dripping due to dripping it moves through our skin okay and that is sensed by our mechanical receptors indirectly then we can feel okay that is it's a uh, sensing suppose we are pouring water okay during water pouring what we sense we don't sense the presence of water we sense indirectly that means it's due to its pressure due to its flow characteristics or due to its temperature difference. If sweat is there at our body the, on the skin, when sweat starts evaporating that means, our body gets our skin gets cooler sensation. So, thermoreceptor is indirectly sensing the presence of sweat. Now, so what we have seen that we have uh, mechanical receptors to sense mechanical activities, mechanical stimuli. We have thermal receptors which sense the thermal um, uh, different thermal stimulation and there is no humidity receptors and humidity reception we get indirectly with the help of mechanical receptor and uh, thermal receptors. Now, in this segment we will discuss the that how to measure this uh, sensory perception. So, we have uh, various techniques to measure the sensory perception. We have uh, seen that uh, the receptors are there, different receptors are there which receive signal. Now, to how to measure? So, first measurement technique is it is called two point threshold technique. So, two point threshold technique means there is two indentation is there. So, the sensory perception of human skin is commonly measured by two point threshold method. The what is two point method? This is the minimum distance between two point like indentation applied to the skin 
below which only one single point of contact is detected with the sense. That means, that a different parts of the body has got its sensation. So, two it is contacted with the two pointed object at different distance. So, that the sense of detection the distance can change. So, the minimum distance between two point like a that means, if we keep on changing suppose at a certain distance it is kept. Now, if we keep on reducing the uh, distance of uh, distance of uh, this uh, objects the points so at certain point the at certain point we will start our body will start sensing as if it is a single point. That point is called minimum distance between two point. So, that that is the one measure of the sensory perception of the body. Okay. It will our skin will sense as a single point. The pressure applied below the two point threshold that is two point threshold point okay, the uh, distance feel like a one point. Okay. So, this uh, two point this is called the two point threshold uh, uh, distance. So, if we apply pressure below that distance then our skin sends signal as if it is a single point. So, this is actually method is known as two point threshold method. So, and beyond that a person can can uh, feel that there is a two distinct points are there. Okay. For the values it is vary from different parts. So, at a finger it is a very close it is around between two uh, around 2.5 millimeter and uh, it goes as high as uh, 50 millimeter at say 5 centimeter at different other zone. So, if we see this is the technique. So, this two indentation so that two points it is uh, uh, it is touching the two points and if the person says okay, I, I cannot distinguish the it whether it is a two points or single point that is the that you can increase little bit distance and gradually and that the point where he starts sensing the it is a there are two separate sensation which is known as that that two point threshold distance. Okay. And it depends on the sensors, sensor uh, sensitivity. If body sensitivity is poor, it is not sensing. Its uh, mechanic receptors are not working, or uh, receptors are not working. That type of test one can do here. Okay. And this picture shows that different zone, different parts of the body. What is the the two point threshold distance? So at finger, okay, finger it's a minimum. So, around say 2.5 this is shown it is a 2.5 zone okay. and then it gradually increases. It is a very common sensation which we normally sense the texture of fabric by finger not by thigh or something. That means, there it is a sensation is not that see you just see thigh it is a very high cuff it is a it is around say 50. 45 50 say, millimeter, which means so within 40 bit below that we cannot sense that the way there is a particular texture or not, there is a two points or not, it gives rough signal, and that is why. And but by the finger, we can sense whether there is a within maybe, maybe within a, say 2.5 millimeter at di that distance, we can sense that there are two different objects are there. So, that that actually indirectly we can uh, correlate with our our uh, comfort or body sensation we can uh, correlate with this. This is the lowest uh, zone and here at the cuff it is a highest okay. and the this is the mean two point threshold distance this is the uh, that uh, the same data it is um, shown in different uh, uh, picture. So, we can uh, get idea about that at the cuff it is maximum. So, we can see the data here it is a 2.5 millimeter a thumb it is there and you can see this is the minimum zone that is the most sensitive zone. So, we can get texture or anything we can uh, test uh, with this help and the cuff and this zone it is a very high. Okay. 
Now, we will uh, this uh, two point sensor scale discrimination by thus this uh, will con next class next class we will continue with this measurement technique okay, by two point threshold and different other techniques we will discuss. Thank you for that. Time.